Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at a hex to hex lookup table. This is able to implement any hex to hex mapping with just a 5 redstone tick delay. I actually have two versions here though. Uh, this one is slightly more compact, while this one can stack on top of itself. Now this definitely falls into that category of things I don't know if someone else has discovered this first, so be sure to check out the description or pinned comment. But real quick, YouTube Analytics tells me that only 2% of my milk is actually fat. I can't believe I've been scammed this hard. Anyways, uh, yeah, lookup tables. In logical circuitry, we often need to create, well, logical circuits. Ones that map inputs to outputs. Lookup tables, or LUTs for short, simply map each input directly to an output. The good news is this means they can implement any mapping in the same amount of time in the same space, no matter how complex the logic is. The bad news is that they also use the same time and space no matter how simple the logic is. But when they do work well, they're very nice to have. Normally in logical redstone we work with binary, but this lookup table in particular uses hexadecimal via signal strength, which is sometimes more convenient than binary. Before going on, I do want to give some attention to this hex layering method that I was recently taught about. By chaining this circuit enough times, you can actually create any hex to hex mapping, just like the lookup table. However, the number of segments you'll need varies based on the mapping. A lot of times it will be more compact, and maybe even faster than the table. But in the absolute worst case, it may look a little scary at first, but it actually turns out to still be a lot more space efficient. These two bricks have the exact same capabilities, and yet this one's still smaller despite being the worst case. Or at least they would have the same capabilities if it weren't for the fact that on Java, the hex layering can run at a higher frequency. Of course, in those unlucky cases, it does take a bit longer for the signal to get all the way through. But the biggest turnoff is easily just that knowing what to set everything to is a lot more complicated and generally requires you to plug the desired map into a computer program, whereas with the lookup table, you just plug all the numbers directly in. So, if you find the table interesting and want something that's generally more optimal but also more work, I definitely recommend checking out hex layering. In the description, I've left a link to a Discord with people who know a lot more about this than I do. But with that out of the way, let's get on to the thing that I am good at, which is the table. To set this thing up, I'm not going to give a full build tutorial or anything, so you'll have to either just copy what you see here or check out the world download. Uh, anyways, these barrels right here are all set to just one, each from every one of them, but the interesting barrels are here in the middle. Here we have index 0, 1, 2, all the way to 15. To set the values, you simply fill each barrel to the value you want to have it output. Of course, to do that, you'll need to know how many items to put in each barrel, but that's not too difficult if you know the trick for unstackable items. 0 is 0, 1 is 1, and 15 is 15. Those ones are pretty straightforward. For everything else, you just subtract 1 and then double it. So if we wanted 5, for example, we would take 5 minus 1 is 4, and then times 2 is 8. And sure enough, we get 5 output. And as a little bit of a midway point, 10 is a nice round number and a nice complete two rows. Anyways, for the stackable variant, we can't quite have all 16 barrels in one row, so 0 is over here. And here's the redstone for that, and do note that this part is, in fact, different. And just to, you know, add that extra view again, I guess. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to setting it up. Here, I've gone ahead and configured this table for the first 16 digits of pi. And if we have it go through that nice and fast, we'll see that, yeah, it goes through every digit nice and perfectly. So uh, yeah, I just remembered that most people don't have that memorized. So you'll just have to trust me that it worked, I guess. But that just leaves one question, how does it work? Well, first we start with a red counter and a ROM. Pretty reasonable place to start, I would say. You know, a way to hold values and a way to select a value. And in this case, we're using this sort of zigzag pattern so that we can pack these parts as densely as possible. And putting them together, we end up with a nice circuit that outputs exactly one value at a time. However, that's the easy part. Now we have to collect all the values into one spot while preserving the signal strength. The most obvious way to do this would be a line of comparators. 
But this doesn't really work because this means some parts have a longer delay than other parts, and so it's just not going to be synchronized at all. We could instead use a sort of tree method, which makes sure that every single path has the same length. However, this just means that they all have the same slow and bulky path length. So that's where I got the idea. What if instead of preserving the signal strength at all costs, we simply let the signal strength decay and then fix it afterwards? After all, we know exactly how far away the source will be, given that we selected it using a red coder. So whatever number appears right here, that is going to be how much the signal is decaying by. All we have to do is take this decayed signal and the decay by signal and add the two numbers together and we'll get the original source. And this works really well um, half of the time. The other half of the time, the source just is too far away and it decays to zero before even reaching the end. So instead of using two values to reconstruct the source, we're going to be using three of them. But first, we're going to take a look at this circuit right here. This is a popular circuit for sending a signal strength long distances, as it basically just amplifies the value. But if we look a little closer, we'll notice that right as this first side stops decreasing, the other side starts decreasing. This means we can employ the power of the circuit to give us a little boost when the signal can't quite reach. And if we set it up just right, we can make it so the amplified signal maxes out right as the main signal becomes useful again. And so with all three values, the distance, the decayed signal, and the amplified decayed signal, we always have enough information to reconstruct the original source. And it turns out it's actually pretty simple. We just need to add all three values together while implicitly subtracting 15. And with that, we are now collecting all of the values from any given location into a single spot in just two redstone ticks and without even taking up a whole lot of space. And putting it all together, the hex to hex lookup table is complete. Of course, to be able to stack it on top of itself, we'll have to handle zero separately as mentioned earlier, as we just don't have the right geometry over here to be able to have all 16 values together. But as you can probably imagine, this hex collection circuit has other uses as well. For example, we can use this to extend the use of that signal strength extension circuit to work for shorter distances. We can also do the whole collection process vertically. And in this case, we're also detecting the distance automatically, which is pretty nice. But we can also reverse the process so we let the signal decay and then uh, fix it several times in order to broadcast a signal vertically. You know, actually, that gives me an idea. So if we can broadcast values vertically, as well as collect them vertically, and this table is able to stack on top of itself, that means we should be able to make a 256 entry table with two hex inputs, kind of like this. I mean, it may not be the most efficient way to do it, but it does the job and it only has a 12 redstone tick delay. And yeah, we basically just broadcast the signal to each layer, run it through each of these subtables, and then select which one we actually want to output. Well, I should probably go ahead and end the video before I go ahead and figure out anything else that you can do with this. Uh, world download can be found in the description for both Java and Bedrock, containing everything you see here. And if you like the video, be sure to support trans rights.